baseball season's underway. We're gonna get ready for a brand new day. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gone. Today we're going to look at firms in a competitive market. So kind of a quick recap, what we mean by competition, and here we're talking about perfect competition, okay? Um, a perfectly competitive market is one where there are many buyers and sellers. The goods that are being offered are largely the same. Really, they're more identical than anything. And firms can freely enter and exit the market. So firms can enter the market or exit the market when they see the ability to make a profit or when the firm is taking losses. Now, what happens because of the characteristics of a competitive market is the firm and the consumer ends up being what we call a price taker, okay? Um, no single buyer or seller is going to have a large enough impact on the market that they're gonna actually be able to move the price. They're not a price maker, they're a price taker. They have to take the market price as it's given. So for the competitive firm, total revenue is gonna be, for every firm actually, not just a competitive firm, uh, price times quantity sold. Okay, so total revenue is price times quantity sold. Average revenue is gonna tell us how much revenue a firm receives from the typical unit sold. Average revenue is gonna be total revenue over quantity. Total revenue is gonna be price times quantity. So if I look, price times quantity over quantity is gonna be price. So for the competitive firm, the average revenue is gonna be actually the price of the good that you're selling, okay? So if you're selling it for $8 on average, that's how much you're gonna bring in. Marginal revenue tells us how much revenue we get from selling one more unit of the good, one additional unit of the good. Marginal revenue, the formula is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. For the competitive firm, marginal revenue is actually gonna be equal to the price of the good because we have to take the market price as it's given. Let's say, for example, we're talking about the market for, I don't know, number two lead pencils. Um, if number two lead pencils are selling for a dollar a dozen, my next dozen that I sell is gonna bring in a dollar. The next dozen I sell after that will bring in a dollar. The next dozen I sell after that will bring in a dollar. The marginal revenue is always gonna be equal to the price of the good. So for competitive firms, marginal revenue equals demand, equals average revenue, equals price. And you can remember this with the handy acronym, Mr. Dart. And for the competitive firm, they can sell as many of their products as they want, because remember, competitive firms very, very small relative to the market, as long as they sell them at the market price. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in class, why this is the case. But they can sell as many of their products as they want, provided they sell it for the actual market price of the good. So, how does a competitive firm maximize its profit? Ultimately, the competitive firm is going to maximize its profit by producing where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This is called the profit maximizing rule. Okay? So, when marginal revenue equals the marginal cost of production, profits are maximized. If marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, the firm would actually want to produce more of the product. Okay. Remember, marginal cost rises. We're going to see what this looks like on a graph in a second. If marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, you actually want to produce less of the product. You would increase your profit. Okay. And what this is going to look like is this. So 
at Mar at MC1, my firm would actually want to produce a Q1. That would be, whoops. At MC1, my firm would actually want to produce a Q1. Okay. And if the price went up to MC2, my firm would want to produce a Q2. Okay. Because that's where marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price equal marginal cost. At We'll call this MC3. My firm would actually want to produce here at Q max. Okay. So wherever the marginal revenue curve right here intersects the marginal cost curve, that's going to determine the quantity that we actually want to produce. Okay. Wherever marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that's going to determine the quantity we actually want to produce. Now, uh, firms in the short run and the long run, okay? So competitive firms in the short run have to decide whether or not they want to shut down or if they or if they want to remain open. Shutting down, what we're really talking about is do you want to close for a period of time, okay? Think of this like should Walmart stay open overnight or should they shut down? Exiting is the decision to actually cease operations entirely. That's a long run decision, okay? So a firm is gonna wanna shut down anytime the marginal revenue, the point where Mr. DARP equals marginal cost, the point where MR equals MC, anytime the point where MR equals MC is less than the average variable cost of production, okay? In the short run, you're better off actually closing if you're not covering your variable costs. Because the way you need to think about this is as long as you're bringing in more revenue than your fixed costs, you're actually making a smart business decision to stay open, okay? If you're bringing in more revenue than your fixed costs of production, you're actually making a smart business decision to stay open. So what that's gonna look like is this. So here's my firm's average variable cost curve and their marginal cost. The firm will actually stay open any point above the marginal, uh, the point where marginal cost intersects average variable cost. So from here on up, my firm will actually stay open. Anytime price falls below average variable cost, okay, from here down, my firm will actually choose to shut down. It's not a profitable decision. So let me give you a kind of a quick for example. Let's suppose, for instance, I have a firm that has fixed costs of $100, variable costs of $200. And this is overnight, okay? And they're deciding if they should stay open overnight. They bring in a revenue of $250. Now, think about this. Oops. If they close, they're going to have to pay those fixed costs of $100, right? If they close, they're going to have to pay those fixed costs. They would end up losing $100. If they stay open, they're going to pay the $300 fixed and variable cost, but they're going to offset that with $250 in revenue. So they would actually end up losing, whoops, $50. So the profitable decision for the firm would be to stay open and lose 50 because overnight, if they close, they would end up losing 100 Okay? So as long as you're making more than your variable cost, you're actually making a profitable decision to remain open. Now, um, this is known as a fixed cost in this case is known as a sunken cost. Sunk costs are money that once you've spent them, you're actually never going to get them back. Okay, Money that once it's been spent, you're actually never going to recover. And the, the uh, taking into consideration sunken costs is actually called the sunk cost fallacy. Um, so people get really, really worried about money that they've spent already 
not realizing that that money can't be recovered. It's spent. It's gone already. Now, in the long run, it's a little different. In the long run, firms can't take losses forever. Um, after a period of time, firms will actually end up exiting the market if the point where MR equals MC is less than the average total cost of production. So if the point where MR equals MC is less than ATC, in the long run, the firm will actually end up exiting the market. Um, just because firms can't take losses forever. And generally speaking, the first firm to, to exit, okay, the first firm to exit is always going to be the firm with the highest cost of production. So firms will exit because of their costs of production. So what that's going to look like is this. The point where MR equals MC is greater than ATC. That's this section right here. Okay, MR equals MC is greater than ATC. Firms will be willing to actually continue to produce. Anytime it falls below ATC, firms will actually exit the market. Now, in the long run, firms will enter the industry if the point where MR equals MC is greater than the average total cost of production. Okay, and this is going to happen because there's profit. So firms are making long run profits here. Now, remember one of the keys of one of the keys of perfect competition is firms are free to enter and exit the market, right? So in the long run, if firms actually see other firms making a profit in an industry, they're going to actually choose to enter that market. So the firm's long-run supply curve, and this is the individual firm's long-run supply curve, ends up being the portion of its marginal cost curve above its average total cost. So any point above ATC, firms are willing to supply. Any point below ATC, so on the marginal cost curve below ATC, from here on down, okay, Firms will exit the market. From here on up, firms are going to enter the market because firms will be making positive economic profits. Okay, And that actually leads us to what do we mean by profit? So profit is total revenue minus total cost. Okay, Now, another way to think about that is profit is total revenue divided by quantity. That's average revenue minus total cost divided by quantity. That's average total cost times quantity. Or, since price equals average revenue, profit is price minus average total cost times the quantity of goods sold. Okay, the price of the good minus the average cost to produce it times the quantity sold. And what that's going to look like is this. So here's a firm with profits. Okay, so let's suppose for a moment that the price of the good is five dollars. MR equals MC at 10 units. The average total cost of production is four dollars. Okay, so goods are selling for five dollars. It costs the firm four dollars to produce it. That means that they're making a dollar in profit per good they sell. They sell 10 goods. That means their profit is going to be equal to a dollar per product times the 10 products they sell, their profit's going to be equal to $10, right? So it's price minus ATC times quantity. To find profit, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to draw your marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price. Find where it intersects marginal cost. At that point, see if it's above or below ATC. So here it's above ATC. The firm is making profit. And then go ahead and find your area of profit and shade it. So this one would be this red shaded area right here. Now, if price equals ATC is below marginal cost, that means the firm is actually losing money. So let's go back to this analogy. Now, let's suppose that the price of the good is four, or pardon me, the average cost is four dollars. The price of the good is three dollars, and now we're only producing eight units because the price has gone down. 
Well, here the firm is losing a dollar per unit, okay? On eight units, that's gonna leave the firm with losses equal to $8, okay? So again, I'm gonna draw my marginal revenue demand, average revenue and price. I'm gonna find where it intersects marginal costs. Here it intersects below ATC, so I'm gonna mark it up to ATC. Draw a drag over to the axis, and then go ahead and shade my area of economic losses. Now, firms will enter the market and exit the market until economic profit is driven to zero. Okay, firms enter and exit until economic profit is driven to zero. Okay, so in the long run, price ends up being equal to the minimum of the ATC. Or firms end up producing at the efficient scale of production. So if you remember, the efficient scale is the minimum of the ATC. Because of free entry and free exit, firms end up producing at the efficient scale of production. And the long run market supply curve ends up being horizontal because of this process of entry and exit. Okay, so what happens is this. At the minimum of the ATC, the market supply, because of entry and exit, ends up being horizontal. And we're going to do a sample example of this in class and go through it in a little more detail. So at the end of this process of entry and exit, firms cannot make an economic profit. However, if economic profit is zero, it's important to remember accounting power profit is positive. And in the long run, firms wind up operating at their efficient scale of production. All right, so in class tomorrow, we're actually going to go through some scenarios, and I think I'm going to put a little video up about it as well, uh, hopefully tomorrow. We're going to go through some scenarios of what happens in the short run and the long 